Hey there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna show you some impressively quick and super easy subject masking techniques using some of Lightroom's latest updates. This stuff is gonna help you take your photos to the next level. You're gonna love it, and let's get into it. So, I've got a different photo, a uh, recent picture from the Zurich Zoo, which I um, really enjoy. I had a great encounter with the, the two snow leopards up there. They just seem to be posing for me perfectly on this rock and I'm just gonna try to fine tune this picture a little bit. It's actually currently reset back to its uh, complete starting point. Let's first just take a look and, and kind of identify what could be improved. Um, looking at the shot, I'm happy with just about everything except for the fact that the snow leopards are blending into their surroundings pretty well. And I'm sure that's uh, not by accident. I'm sure that's part of the design of the exhibit that they sort of fit into that environment. And anyway, I need to, create a little bit of separation. I'd like them to come forward somehow and kind of uh, pop out a little bit in the picture, so to speak. And I'd like the background to kind of become a little bit more subdued. How can I do that? Well, I can lighten the main subjects, um, that'll help. I can darken the background, that will also help. I could also create just a little bit of color separation by warming the cats up just a little bit and cooling the background down just a little bit and that warm color will help them kind of come forward toward the viewer. So those are the things I have in mind at the moment. To start out, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the masking tools and I'm gonna click Select Subject. And in a matter of seconds, Lightroom is drawn a perfect outline uh, you know, all around these cats, including it's, I mean, look at look at how well it has actually traced the edge of the whiskers on this cat. I, I mean, that's just unbelievable. There would have been no way to achieve this with the brushes before this um, last update to the software. So, I mean, this is just incredible. Um, however, Lightroom seems to think that one of these snow leopards is growing a pretty wild tumor right off of his back. So we need to fine tune the selection just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna go up here to the, the mask panel, which is open, and I'm gonna start by just, uh, I'm gonna rename this first mask because I know I'm gonna end up with two. So this is going to be my cats. And um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to subtract from this mask with the brush. Um, so I'm just gonna grab that brush and I, I can see that there's a minus sign right in the middle of my brush, that's a good sign. And I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna gently, or carefully rather, trace over the back of this cat, taking away the tumor. This part I can do a little quicker. So sometimes you'll have to do that if the tone of the background and the tone of the main subject are pretty similar. They're also quite similar in color, so I can see how um, you know, maybe Lightroom got a little bit confused there, but it's definitely saved me a lot of time doing most of the heavy lifting. And um, I noticed that there's also a spot down here in between um, the, the cat's paws, which seems to have been um, missed. So I'm gonna go back up here to my mask and I'm gonna click on add, and I'm gonna add with a brush and just make sure that that part of the shot is indeed getting picked up in the selection. And I noticed that over here, we've got a spot in between this cat's legs, which needs to be removed. So I'm gonna subtract and just go right in between these paws here and make sure that the grass in between and the rock in between these two feet is not part of the selection. Looks like I may have overdone it there a little bit. So I can actually just hold down the um, option key or the alt key on the keyboard. And I get the, um, the inverse of this brush so this is gonna actually help me add that foot back in if I accidentally overdid it. And this over here, I think this actually belongs to the cat. So let's just leave that where it is. Okay, great. So all of these things that I've done underneath my cat's mask, that all defines basically the selection of these cats. That's terrific. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go over to my exposure slider and I'm going to hover my mouse right over the number box associated with uh, exposure. And I'm just gonna lift the exposure up, maybe something like 
three tenths of a stop, four tenths of a stop, something like that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm looking at that white fur and I still see lots of detail there. I'm nowhere near clipping highlights anywhere and um, it's, it's just starting to look a lot more vibrant and I like that. Then I'm going to move up here to the temperature slider and I'm just going to nudge the temperature up. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to make these cats look like they're yellow. That would be a little bit crazy, but I'm going to just nudge it up so that some of the color in that fur comes out just a little bit more than it is already. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me right there. Um, I like this. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears now, and I'm going to uh, click Done. Now my goal is to actually subdue the background a little bit, bring the exposure down, bring that color down, uh, cool it off in the background. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to actually go back into the mask panel here, and I I don't want to invert this selection. If I go here and I invert this, it's going to actually take all the settings that I've already applied and it's going to invert them and apply them to the background. So what I actually have to do is I need to take this mask that I already did and I need to duplicate that mask. Okay. So now we see we've got mass, we've got cats copy up here. We're going to rename this and we're going to call this background. Okay, it's a little confusing at the moment because both of them are actually the exact same mask, but we're now going to click on the background mask and we're gonna go down to the very bottom last thing that we did in the list and we're gonna click the three little dots and we are going to invert this selection. And because, here's a funny thing, what we've got here, I'm gonna turn on the overlay so you can see. We've got the background selected, but we've got this area unselected. And this is kind of an odd thing um, with regard to the brushes when we invert, if we took things out of a selection previously, they get added into a selection later. It's a little bit confusing. Anyway, we're just going to add that back in. And actually this whole thing needs to be included. Okay. That's all part of the cat. All right, great. Okay. Now that our selection is cleaned up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reduce. Notice that the changes that I applied to the last mask are in fact copied into this one. So actually what I could do is I could just double click on the effect, um, the word effect, just reset that. And then I could come in here and just lower my exposure down. I don't need to overdo it. Um, you know, even just, even just a fifth of a stop would probably be enough. So I'm just going to go down two tenths of a stop. It's already a pretty, pretty, pretty dramatic improvement here. If I, if I go down to 30, is that too much? It might be a little bit too much, starting to become a little bit unbelievable. But I feel like I could probably get away with two tenths of a stop. Then I'm going to move up here to my temperature, and I'm just going to cool the background off a teeny bit. Don't need to overdo it, but I just want that warmth of the cats to kind of help send them forward. And that is about all I'm going to do. Uh, between the two masks. Um, what I could also do is just add in a little bit of a vignette if I feel like it. Of course, this is all, you know, to taste. Not everybody likes vignettes, but sometimes I think they help channel attention inward. And of course, you can kind of play around with the midpoint of your vignette and kind of constrict it to the outer corners or allow it to kind of bleed into the middle of the shot. But I'm actually liking that quite a bit. That's looking good to me. Um, I might just uh, turn up the overall clarity of the whole photo and maybe just nudge the vibrance up a little bit. And I think that we're good to go on this one. So I'm finding that the uh, subject select is really handy for wildlife shots, for portraiture, for anything basically where there's, you know, kind of a well-defined subject in the middle of the frame. It's a very quick and easy way to create a mask to address specific problems in uh, those parts of the photos. So let's just take a quick look at the before and after here. I mean, that's a pretty big difference. On the left, everything's just kind of blending together here. And on the right, I feel like those uh, subjects are really kind of popping out in the shot. So very handy. 
practice that one on your own shots. I'm really curious to hear what your questions are. And we've got a lot more waiting for you where that came from. So head on over to viewfindermastery.com where we've got full length tutorials, thoughtful feedback, and a really fun community of photographers that are waiting for you to join in. And while you're there, go ahead and download our free top 10 purchases guide if you'd like some advice on must-have gear items that won't break the bank.